What's up YouTube, I'm David Warren and welcome back to this week's video. If you're new to this channel, consider subscribing. My content is all about being a nurse practitioner and being a CRNA student. In today's video, we're gonna talk about is it worth it to be a nurse practitioner part two. I'm gonna link a video up here. If you haven't seen this video, I would suggest that you go watch this video first because it's gonna give you a little bit of the backstory on part one. I originally wasn't planning on really doing a multi-part series on this, but this video did well, and I really wanna kind of expound upon that because I have other things I wanna say, but watch that video first because that's gonna give you a bit of the backstory on is it worth it. Now, some more backstory. Usually every year I try to do a video like this examining whether it's worth it to be a nurse practitioner, and this is 2022 part so we're gonna jump right into it. Is it worth it to be a nurse practitioner in 2022 part two? The first point I would make to you, I've got some things listed here, so I'm gonna be like intermittently looking down to make sure I don't miss anything. The first part that I would say to you is if you are planning to go to nurse practitioner school, you really need to have a plan for clinical laid out before you ever apply. And what do I mean by that? So obviously in nurse practitioner school, you're gonna to have to do clinical rotations. And really, to do clinical rotations, you have to know somebody because 90-something percent of nurse practitioner schools, very near 100%, are not going to find clinical sites for you. It will 100% be up to you to find your clinical rotations. Now, I would just encourage you to do this just for grins. Go to the DFW Facebook page, Dallas Fort Worth. I've had a lot of people ask in previous videos, what is DFW? Where is DFW? Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas. Go to the DFW Facebook group for NPs and PAs. It's like DFW NPs and PA. Just, I'm sure all cities have something very similar to this, but just for this, because I'm a member of this and I like see what's going on, go to that Facebook group, request to join. I don't think you have to be like live in the area, but it's very interesting to see how many students post like on the daily about can somebody help me find a clinical rotation? I'm in desperate need of a preceptor. My preceptor fell through. These are like very, very common themes that I see literally almost every day. Students trying to find a clinical rotation. And there are so many problems with that. I, I This is not the video to discuss the problems with that. But all of that to say you really need to have preceptors and clinical rotations lined up before you ever think about hitting submit on your application to nurse practitioner school. If you're a nurse practitioner and you agree with that, comment below and let me know. I'm very interested to hear your take on it because in my school, when I went to nurse practitioner school, some of my rotations were set up for me. I also had the option of finding my own. Granted, I went to school in 2014, so this was like, almost 10 years ago and the clinical rotations weren't as hard to find but nowadays it's very hard to find a preceptor and a lot of the times students are left to find that for themselves and so it's really all about who you know and I, I think it's ridiculous that students have to go set up their own rotations I think it's crazy I think it's lazy on the school's part that's for another video I'm really not going to try not to get off on a soapbox here but make sure you have your clinical rotation set up what, what do I mean by that no, have somebody in mind, like call up whoever you know. And if you don't know anybody, you know, if you don't know anybody to do clinical rotations with, you should strongly consider probably not going to nurse practitioner school right now because you're gonna struggle finding clinical rotations unless you go to a school that sets it up for you. If you go to a school that sets it up for you, it's not a big deal. But if you're expected to find clinical rotations on your own, you really need to have that done before you apply. And all of that comes down to knowing somebody. If you work in a big hospital system, chances are you probably know somebody. And obviously this is like 30,000 foot view. You're gonna have to, it's gonna depend on your specialty. So, you know, if you're in the NICU, you probably know people in the NICU who can get you into some rotations. If you are doing a family nurse practitioner uh, program and you need to get in family medicine clinicals, from me, from like my experience, I didn't really know family medicine providers when I worked in the ER. It's just like not somebody I interacted with. So it would have been very challenging for me to find family providers when I really wasn't, when I really didn't work, I'm trying to find my words here, when I really didn't work in that environment. Do you see what I'm saying? It would be challenging for me to know people where I like didn't even interact or know anybody. And so my point to you is have those rotations set up or have somebody set up before you apply. Like if you know 
friends in a different area or friends that work in, you have friends that are nurse practitioners that work in the certain area that you wanna be in, have those people lined up before you ever apply because it will, it will give you a huge advantage when you're in nurse practitioner school and you already have somebody lined up for your clinicals. That's huge. And if you need to know what clinicals you need to have, very easily research that. Get online and figure out what clinicals do I need for X, Y, and Z. Family nurse practitioner, acute care nurse practitioner, pediatric nurse practitioner, whatever your specialty is, find out what clinicals you need. Secure your preceptor before you submit your application. You will be amazed at how smooth things will go after that. So with that being said, the second point is have the same plan for work. And I know that sounds crazy, um, but there is massive, massive oversaturation in the nurse practitioner field right now. And so I really wouldn't recommend going the nurse practitioner route unless you have a job lined up before you start. If you have a job lined up before you start, you know somebody and they're like, yeah, go through the program two years, three years, whatever it is, you got a job after you come out. If you can guarantee that, then you need to go to nurse practitioner school. If you can't guarantee that you're gonna get a job, just know that there's a good chance that you may not get a job after you get out of nurse practitioner school. Now, there is probably a 100% chance, this is a big caveat, there is probably a 100% chance you will get a job out of nurse practitioner school if you're willing to relocate. So if you're in some particular area, I'm just gonna use Texas as an example, if you're some city in Texas like Dallas, and you go to nurse practitioner school and you have no intention of leaving Dallas, there is a very good chance that you may be waiting years, a year at least, before you get a nurse practitioner job. If you're willing to go to nurse practitioner school and then uproot everything and move across the country for a job, absolutely. You can probably go to nurse practitioner school and guarantee that you're gonna get a job somewhere in the United States. You're just gonna have to be willing to move for it, if that makes sense. Now, all of that to say, if you know somebody or if you have ends with somebody, that's where it's at and that's where you will get a job. I've received tons of comments from people who, when I talk about oversaturation, they're like, well, I know somebody and I got hired right out of school. And yes, that's my point. If you know somebody, you will probably get a job. So make sure you have good contacts, make sure you know somebody, make sure you can get a job before you dive right into it or be willing to relocate. That's my point on that. Okay, number three, don't do it for the money. I think this maybe goes without saying, but don't do it for the money. If you're going to nurse practitioner school for the money, you're gonna be sorely disappointed because you're gonna end up with way more responsibility than you probably want, with, lay with way less pay than you probably deserve. And so salary-wise, $100,000 is probably the going rate in most places. Obviously, more and less depending on your location, but like, General, big, broad picture, roughly $100,000, give or take, is average starting salary. Obviously, there are people who are gonna comment who will be like, you know, I made 150,000 as a new. Sure, you did, okay, no big deal. But big picture, overall, $100,000 is average for probably most new grads in the United States. Again, don't do it for the money. You can make that as a nurse. There are nurses who are making probably way more than $150,000 doing things. So if your goal is money, get out of healthcare. I'm gonna repeat that again. If your goal is money, get out of healthcare because this is not the place for you to make money, all right? If you enjoy healthcare and you enjoy helping people and you enjoy using your brain, then yes, this is probably the career for you, but don't do it for the money, all right? I'm just gonna leave that there. The money is nice, but for $100,000, I could find a whole lot of other things to do for the money. All right, um, the next point I would make, number four, consider other fields. And the reason I say this is because there are a lot of people who message me, email me, Instagram me, and ask this very question. Is it worth it to be a nurse practitioner? Or what's your take on being a nurse practitioner? And I find that quite funny because I like, I feel like I'm very open with my opinions about is it worth it to be a nurse practitioner? Like I've made a lot of videos on this, my opinions out there. Um, you've probably seen some of the other videos that say I'm quitting my career as a nurse practitioner. It wasn't a lie, I, I did quit to go back to CRNA school. Uh, it doesn't mean I'm giving it up for forever, but my opinion on nurse practitioners is definitely out there. And I think the first thing I say to people when they ask me that is, have you shadowed a nurse practitioner? And the overwhelming response is no. And so if you are considering nurse practitioner school, 
you like absolutely need to shadow a nurse practitioner. This just doesn't go for nurse practitioners. Whatever you wanna do, let's say you wanna to go to CRNA school. Actually, it's like a requirement to go to CRNA school in most schools to shadow a CRNA, to make sure like actually, yes, I'm gonna dedicate two years of my life, three years of my life to this, this is what I wanna do. So shadow a nurse practitioner, shadow a family medicine doctor, whatever specialty you're in, shadow that specialty. Make sure this is what you want to do because I know tons of people personally and through social media, through you guys who have gone to nurse practitioner school who either can't find jobs, so they're working as nurses and now they have a useless degree right now because they can't get a job or they start working as a nurse practitioner and they're like, I don't like this. I don't wanna do this anymore. Like there's too much responsibility, too much risk. Like I'm going back to the bedside. And so make sure this is what you wanna do because it really does the profession a disservice if you're able to get in, complete the program and then not use anything. And that that's like one of my pet peeves is really make sure this is what you wanna do before you commit and before you sign up for it. And I'm just gonna leave that point there. Make sure this is what you wanna do. Uh, the next point is do your due diligence. And what I mean by that is kind of very similar. Look up and see the areas of where you might want to practice and what the job outlook is. And so if I live, I'm in Fresno, California right now, obviously for CRNA school. Uh, maybe it's not that obvious, but if you've seen my other videos, you may think it's obvious. Anyway, uh, back, to, <laughs> back to my point. Fresno, California, if I were going to nurse practitioner school in Fresno, California, I would definitely look in this area and I wanted to stay here. Now, if I wanted to move, different story, but wherever you want to end up, at least like glance in that area and see, is it even possible to work here? Like if I wanted to stay in Fresno, I'm just gonna use that as an example. I would go online and look and be like, okay, what's the outlook for nurse practitioners in this particular area? Like, is there a big population of nurse practitioners in this area? Is there a smaller population? Are they utilized? Like what's, this, what's the lowdown? And a good way to do that is go to your like local nurse practitioner association. And so if you're in Texas, it would be like the Texas Association of Nurse Practitioners or California Association of Nurse Practitioners whatever area you're in, go to that like local conference and you can network with people from that area to find out, hey, what's the job outlook like in that particular area? And really, I can sit here and talk to you all day about job outlook in Fresno, California, but I don't really work in Fresno, California right now, so I don't really know that much about it. I would be giving you like a bunch of crazy information. So find somebody who actually is there, who actually works there and knows the like microclimate of the profession in that particular area. And really you're only gonna get that by going there and interacting with people. Now, if you know people in that area, you may not have to go to a conference, you can just talk to somebody. But if you don't know somebody, going to a conference like that is a great way to network and to introduce yourself and to really like get your feelers out there to figure out is it actually worth it. And that's what I mean by do your due diligence. Find out if I wanna stay here in Fresno, like if I have no desire to ever leave here, which is not true, Fresno is literally a dump and I would never stay here. I'm so sorry to all of you people who are from Fresno if you're ever watching this, but I would not wanna stay here. There are a million reasons why I would hate to be in California, especially this part of California. But if I wanted to stay here, like I would have to do some research and find out, is it actually worth it to stay here in this area? Are nurse practitioners utilized? What's the salary? Are there jobs available, et cetera? You get my point there. So do your due diligence on that. All right, my last point, this kind of also goes without saying, and I kind of covered it in my previous video, but I'm gonna hit on it again a little bit, and that is choose a reputable school. Choose a reputable school. And in my first video, if you watched that, you know that I talked a little bit about like online versus brick and mortar. I'll touch on that a little again here. There's not, it's not that online schools are bad. Not all online schools are bad and not all brick and mortar schools are great. It really depends on the school. It depends on where you're at. There are so many factors that come into that. But I mean, what do I, what do I mean by choose a reputable school? Choose a school that's gonna provide you with like a good quality education. Look at their curriculum. If you know somebody who teaches there, if you know somebody who's gone there, talk to, talk to other students. Usually if you get in touch with the admissions counselor, or if you get in touch with a program director, they can put you in touch with students in that particular program. And that's a great way to find out firsthand, like how is this actually going? I've had a number of, this is very common in CRNA schools, I've had a number of people reach out to me and ask me, hey, how's your CRNA program? What's it like? What do you do? And I do try to post content on that because 
I think that's important to know. And so I would encourage you to do the same if you're going to NP school. Find somebody who goes to that school and find out, is it worth it? Is it a good school? What are they learning? How are their professors? How are the exams? Are the professors relatable? Like find out those things. Do they place you in clinical? What's the tuition? There's so many factors that go in. And it's not just a one size fits all. It's not like I can sit here and list for you, hey, this is a great school because in your eyes, it may have things that you don't want or it may not have things that you do want. So you have to do your due diligence on that as well and find out what are you looking for in a school and does that meet your needs? For me personally, it would have to be a good location. There would have to be clinical sites that I would get an excellent learning experience. The faculty would have to be dedicated and I would have to know that they actually care about my success. They would have to have good board pass rates. Those are things that I would want. You may have completely different ideas on that, and that's okay. It doesn't make one school bad and another school good, but just make sure that that school is gonna meet your needs before you sign up, because I see a lot of people just going to some random online university and signing up for something that they don't even know about. They've never shadowed a nurse practitioner. They don't know anybody who's gone to the school. It's just like, hey, I'm, this school's gonna like get me through and I'm gonna pass boards, and then what? And that's one of the problems that I have is like, it's so easy to go to nurse practitioner school that you could probably go anywhere, but just make sure that the school you're going to is reputable. Make sure it's gonna give you a good education, that you're gonna come out knowing what you need to know and you're gonna be able to pass boards and that you're gonna be able to find a job. That's really what it comes down to is being able to find a job. And if you set yourself up for that from the start, you shouldn't have any problems doing it after you finish. So that's what I wanted to tell you today about is it worth it to be a nurse practitioner? Here comes the final answer. Is it still worth it? I do think it is still worth it if you meet these qualifications that I've talked about in this video and in the previous video. It's not like you can just go to a nurse practitioner school and expect to get the quality education that you would get elsewhere, like standard across the board. It's just not that way. It's gonna be different and it's worth it if you have jobs set up, if you have clinical rotation set up, if you're in a good quality school, you're gonna pass boards, you're gonna learn what you need to know, you have faculty that care about you, that want you to succeed, you're in a mostly brick and mortar program, maybe with some online components, there are actual admission standards, all of those things make it worth it, I think. Now, at the very end of the day, if you have 10 years of experience, does all of this matter? Not really, because after you get your experience, after you graduate and you get a job, your first job, your first job is really going to depend upon where you went to school, the clinical rotations you had, things like that. But let's say, like for me, I've worked in emergency medicine for almost 10 years now. Like it doesn't really matter where I went to school and what clinical rotations I did. It does to some degree, but there's more emphasis put on what your experience. What are you competent in? Like, where have you worked? Things like that after you get some experience. These videos are mainly directed at newer nurse practitioners. After you have your experience, even if you went to a crummy school, if you have good experience, you're probably gonna get hired. It's not that big of a deal. These are more geared towards uh, like newer nurse practitioners, people considering going to nurse practitioner school. So with that being said, Comment below, let me know what your suggestions are. Is it worth it to be a nurse practitioner? What else would you add to this list? I would be very interested to know. Thank you for watching. Again, consider subscribing if you haven't and I'll see you in the next video.